And now, Marsha E. Sims. Marsha Sims, Barnard Class of 1974. For 45 years, you've been intrepid and devoted in all you do in law and in life. After Barnard, you earned a law degree from Stanford and devoted your entire professional career to practicing law at major New York firms. At the time of your retirement in 2010, you were a partner at Weil, Weil Gottschall, and Mangies. <laughs> <laughs> but you notice I looked for you to... <laughs> Throughout those years, your legal contributions have been lauded and honored by numerous bar associations, from the Association of Black Women Attorneys and the New York City Bar Association to the American Bar Association. At the ABA, you chaired committees of the Business Law Section, chaired the African Law Initiative Council, served as a member of the Commission on Women in the Profession, and are a member of the Central and Eastern European Division of the Rule of Law Initiative. And you've always found time and inclination for pro bono and civic work. For the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, for the board of WNET Channel 13, you were elected a life trustee. For the board of the American Arbitration Association and as counsel for the Federal Advisory Committee on the African Burial Ground. You are currently a trustee and member of the Executive Committee of the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, which is good because it means you're back here more often. <laughs> and you give back to your alma maters with commitment and devotion. At Stanford, you serve on the boards of both the Alumni Association and the Law School Board of Visitors and chaired the Law School's annual fund. And at Barnard, you were elected to the nominating committee of the Alumni Association. And we are so grateful that you've chosen to mentor so many students. At all times, you've made it your mission to help others, knowing how important that help can be. As we celebrate your 45th reunion, we are delighted to honor your expertise in law and your energy in life with the 2019 Distinguished Alumna Award. Marsha. Um, so you never want to be last, but at least I'm not keeping you from food or drink. <laughs> and I'm also, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, Leslie, so I am much more interested than many of you as to what's gonna happen with Planned Parenthood there. So last fall, I was invited to the college to lunch with the Schwidler Fellows. Instead of telling them my life story, I decided to tell them what I'd done the last few months. I'd been to board meetings at Sotheby's, at the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, at the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, and the American Law Institute. I'd been to four countries, where among other things, I'd visited Auschwitz, and the Genocide Memorial Museum in Rwanda. I'd looked at a lot of art. I went to the Leopold Museum in Vienna and the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston to get my fill of Klimt and Schiller. I have gone to the Barnes Foundation in Philadelphia. I've gone Chelsea Gallery hopping with Velma Golden, the president of the Studio Museum in Harlem, and I've been to the Linhart Center here on Columbia's campus. So what, if anything, did Barnard have to do with this? I said to the fellows, on his face, nothing. I came here to be a teacher. I ended up practicing law for 35 plus years. Getting a passport was not on my list of things to do, but I've been to more than 70 countries. I never took a course in art history, but I spend lots of time looking at, buying, and thinking about the business of art. But Barnard gave me confidence. Barnard gave me the confidence to go from being in the education program with Sue Sachs, who's here, to thinking very briefly about getting a PhD in political science, and then off to law school, all in the fall of my senior year in college. When I decided to go off to Stanford Law School, when my classmates Vicki Brown decided to go to Harvard Law School, and Sheila Abdus Salam decided to go to Columbia Law School, we had no clue that we would end up with careers that we had. However, we thought we were Nikki Giovanni's little black pearls, <laughs> and the world was our oyster, so off we went. Bernard gave me courage. It gave me the courage to walk off of some professional and personal cliffs, not knowing if a safety net was below. It gave me the courage to walk into many offices, conference rooms and boardrooms, where I was usually the first and still often the only black woman. Barnard gave me community. For 10 plus years, I've been a member of my classmate, Leslie Kalman's Women's Culture, Women's Lives Book Club, 
which was originally formed under the auspices of the Barnard Center for Research on Women. Barnard gave me the Barnard Organization of Soul Sisters, which is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. My sisters, a number of whom are in this room, have helped me celebrate my successes. My sisters have helped me up when I hid my head on the black woman's acrylic ceiling. We have mourned our sisters who've left us too soon. And tomorrow, we will celebrate the life well lived of our campus mom, Catherine Wilcox. So no, I told one of the fellows, I couldn't tell them the most important class I'd taken here because I couldn't remember the names, nor would they 10 years later. <laughs> Nor could I tell them the most important class to take, because that didn't matter either. The most important thing Barnard did for me, and would do for them, is to let us know that it's great to be an intelligent, ambitious woman who's encouraged to voice her opinions loudly and often, and be emotional about it if she wants to. Life doesn't get much better than that. Thank you.